Imagine existing in a world where your thoughts are more audible than your words and sometimes visible like your reality. Here everything you imagine is on display for everyone to see. That's the concept of this American movie. As a man you can't have a secret crush or even keep your thoughts to yourself. Today we're looking into the 2021 sci-fi action thriller film called Chaos Walking. But before we jump into the details, make sure to show us some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now, let's get right into it. The movie takes place on a distant planet called New World, far away from Earth. It's the year 2258, and some people from Earth move to New World seeking a better life. The twist is that on this planet, known for its constant sunlight, everyone experiences a peculiar condition called the noise. This means people can hear and see each other's thoughts. Despite the downsides of having no privacy with the noise, they can do cool things like creating 3D holograms of their thoughts. However, before now, the human colonists had a clash with the native species called the Spackle in a bitter civil war where most female human colonists were allegedly killed, and communication with Earth was completely lost. The story follows Todd Hewitt, who lost his parents in the war and lives in a colony named Prentice Town. Todd hasn't seen any females in his life, not even his own mother because the Civil War happened when he was a baby. Todd spends most of his time assisting his adoptive fathers, Ben and Cillian, on their farm. However, Todd's goal is to become like the colony's mayor, David Prentice, who has mastered controlling his noise because people who can control their noise are considered to be powerful men, and Todd wants to be one at all costs. Meanwhile, Todd always finds himself feuding with prominent figures in Prentice Town like Aaron A. K., the preacher, and Davy, the son of Mayor Prentice. The preacher doesn't like Todd because he always tries to hide his noise from him, which the preacher considers a weakness. On the other hand, Todd always finds himself competing with Davy for the mayor's approval, often creating conflict between them. One day, a second wave of humans arrives on a big mothership. First, they send a small scout ship with three crew members to check out the planet and connect with the first wave of colonists to know if it is safe. Unfortunately, the scout ship crashes in the woods near Prentice Town. While Todd is helping his dad, he notices someone stealing food and follows him into the woods with his dog, Manchi, while chasing the thief. Todd stumbles upon the crash site and soon realizes that the thief might be the survivor. Todd hurries to tell the mayor about the spaceship but tries to hide it from the others by thinking about his name repeatedly, saying, I'm Todd Hewitt. I'm Todd Hewitt. However, despite his efforts, Todd accidentally shares the thought of the spaceship with others, raising tension in the colony. Todd finally tells Mayor Prentice about his discovery and leads him to the crash site. Upon learning that the survivor has no noise, Mayor Prentice assumes it's a girl and orders the townsman to find her. Soon after, Todd, wandering alone in the woods, stumbles upon the girl. Overwhelmed by shock, he unintentionally exposes her presence to the men through his noise. The girl attempts to flee, but Prentice uses the power of his noise to trap her in a hologram cage. Prentice takes the girl to his home, expressing sympathy for the loss of her crew members. The girl asks Mayor Prentice why there are no women in the town, and he tells her about the war with the Spackle and how they massacred all the women in Prentice town. Prentice asks her about the mothership, and she reveals to him that she was sent to scout the planet for survivors of the first wave and that the mothership is coming to rescue her. However, the girl soon becomes suspicious of Prentice's intentions, especially as he continues to ask her for more details about the ship's landing site and time. Prentice is suddenly called outside to address the curious townsman, leaving his son Davy to watch the girl. Davy, being curious himself, begins to search the girl's bag and subsequently plays with one of her gadgets. The gadget turns out to be a laser shooting weapon, which accidentally helps her escape. While hiding, the girl overhears Prentice talking to the town's influential preacher, Aaron, from under the floorboards. Prentice reveals his plan to seize the colony's mothership, intending to take control of the entire planet. He emphasizes the importance of preventing the girl from contacting and warning the mothership. However, the preacher believes the girl is an angel sent to punish the men of Prentice Town for their sins. As Prentice and others search for the girl, Todd steals her bag from the mayor's home, hoping to find something interesting. Back home, Todd discovers the girl hiding in his barn and assures her that he'll keep her safe. Later, one of Prentice's men comes looking for her but Todd claims not to know anything about it and hides his noise. However, Ben and Cillian soon learn about the girl and decide to lock her in the barn first. Afterward, they insist Todd return her to Prentice to avoid trouble, but Todd refuses, expressing his desire to help her. Seeing Todd's commitment, Ben eventually decides to help him, realizing this might be Todd's chance to start his own family. With this, Ben shows Todd a map and instructs him to take the girl to a place called Farbridge, another human town Todd didn't know existed. 
Cillian is concerned that the people in Farbrench might kill Todd if they find out he's from Prentice Town. However, Ben assures him that they won't harm Todd as long as the girl is with him and also instructs Todd not to tell anyone that he's from Prentice Town. However, before they can leave, Prentice and his men arrive looking for the girl. Todd tries to hide the thought of her location in his mind, but Mayor Prentice manages to get into his head, revealing that the girl is in the barn. Meanwhile, the girl had been repairing an abandoned electric motorbike she found in the barn and later escapes on it as soon as Prentice men open the barn door. Todd immediately chases after her on horseback as Prentice men chase after them. In a moment of anger, Prentice kills Cillian and takes Ben hostage, and later joins his men to chase after the girl. After some time, the girl crashes the motorbike and Todd is thrown off as well, tumbling down a hill. Unfortunately, the horse also sustains a broken leg in the fall, and Todd decides to end its pain. After losing their means of transportation, Todd, having the map in his mind, promises the girl that he'll take her to a place where she'll be safe. The girl soon begins to trust Todd since she can virtually hear and see all his thoughts. Soon the two begin their journey to Farbrench on foot, and Todd's dog, Manchi, joins them. During their journey, the girl reveals to Todd that her name is Viola. Viola was born on the mothership, and her parents died during the 64-year journey from Earth to the New World. Meanwhile, Prentice forces Ben to tell him where Todd is heading. After learning that Todd is heading to Farbrench, Prentice arms his men to the teeth with weapons as they all head out to Farbrench to capture the girl before she communicates with the mothership. On their way to Farbrench, Manchi discovers a spackle village and begins to bark, but Todd quickly stops him to avoid drawing attention. However, Todd and Viola soon get attacked by a spackle, and Todd manages to fight it off. After a while, Todd finally subdues it and is ready to kill it, but Viola teaches him kindness, convincing him to let it go. They finally reach Farbrench, where they first meet a young boy and his little sister on a farm. The kids take them to the town, and they soon realize that it's home to many men, women and children. Moments later, they meet the leader of Farbrench, Mayor Hildy. Mayor Hildy warmly welcomes them to the Farbrench colony as Todd looks around in shock. However, Viola unknowingly mentions Todd's connection to Prentice Town, leading to Todd being immediately put in handcuffs. Meanwhile, as Hildy talks privately with Viola, the townsmen begin to threaten to kill Todd due to an established law that says that any man from Prentice Town must be hanged. However, Todd confronts them but Hilly soon interferes, instructing the townsmen to back off after telling them that the law doesn't apply to boys. Meanwhile, Prentice and his men continue their pursuit, and Preacher Aaron's loud noise of impending doom begins to create tension among the men. Mayor Hildy provides Todd and Viola with shelter and food and reveals to them that Viola can contact her mothership from Haven, the first human settlement in the New World. Viola and Todd decide that they will head out for Haven the next morning, but Todd doesn't want her to go. Feeling reluctant about Viola leaving, Todd imagines what it would be like if she stayed and kissed him. Viola hears his thoughts and gets angry about it, but Todd apologizes to her. After dinner, Hildy gives them separate rooms, stating that men and women don't sleep together because of their noise. However, Todd finds it hard to sleep, as he seems troubled that Viola is leaving. With this, Todd finds his mother's journal that Ben put in his bag. He shows it to Viola, who is also awake. Viola asks Todd about the journal and Todd tells her that he can't read because Prentice and Preacher Aaron burned all the books when Todd was a child, believing that having noise was enough education for children. Viola offers to read Todd's mother's journal for him. In the journal Todd's mother, Carissa, writes about Todd's birth, expressing love and admiration. She writes about how his dad had died before his birth and reveals how the men were turned against the women by Prentice and Aaron the Preacher because they couldn't stand the women knowing everything about them while they knew nothing in return. The women face curfews and Aaron claimed women lack noise because they have no souls. In the journal, Carissa predicts chaos and urges Todd to keep searching for hope if things go wrong. With this, Todd realizes that the women were not killed by the native alien spackles, as he had been told but by Prentice and the men of Prentice Town. Feeling betrayed, Todd storms out of the road determined to avenge his mother as he soon begins to have troubled thoughts. The next day, Prentice and his men arrive at Farbrench, demanding to get Viola. Hildy confronts Prentice, encouraging the people of Farbrench to stand their ground. However, Prentice manages to use his mind-bending power to make the men surrender their weapons, leaving Hildy in shock. Meanwhile, a man tries to attack Viola, but she manages to subdue him and tie him up. Todd later joins Viola, and they both attempt to escape. Shortly after, the preacher spots them and chases after them, forcing them to hide in a barn. The preacher tries to go after them but a woman in the barn begins to shoot at him, forcing him to stay away. With this, Prentice decides to send Ben into the barn to lure Todd and Viola out in exchange for sparing his life. 
In the barn, Ta confronts Ben about the journal, and Ben admits he couldn't do anything to help the women in the chaos. He apologizes to Todd, and urges him to let him protect him now. Later, Ben emerges from the store with Viola. As she walks towards Prentice, she unexpectedly disappears, and he realizes that it's just a 3D hologram noise created by Ben to distract him. While Prentice and others are puzzled, the real Viola, Todd, and Manchi escape from the back door. However, Preacher Aaron spots them and begins to chase them. Soon, they find a boat and escape through the river, but Aaron catches up with them, knocking them over. Todd manages to save Viola, but unfortunately, Aaron kills Manchi in the water, leaving Todd devastated. Despite the heartbreaking loss, Viola comforts Todd, and they press on with their journey to Haven. Afterward, they find the support towers of a monorail built by the first wave colonists. This rail guides Viola and Todd along their path to the Haven. As they journey, they reach the ruins of the first colony ship, and Prentice and his men close in on them. Todd suggests they keep moving, but Viola realizes they're running out of time and suggests using the ship's emergency transmitter. They locate the transmitter, but Viola discovers the antenna is damaged. Despite her despair, Todd offers to repair it. Prentice and his men soon arrive at the ruin, with Ben threatening to kill Ben if Todd doesn't surrender Viola. However, Ben encourages Todd not to give in to the threat. Meanwhile, Preacher Aaron sneaks into the ship and attacks Viola. Aaron, regretting his actions, sees himself as a sinner and pleads with Viola to purify him by killing him. With no alternative, Viola uses one of her gadgets to burn Aaron, who dies proclaiming himself baptized with fire. Shortly after, Todd comes out to face Prentice. Prentice asks Todd about Viola in an attempt to hear his thoughts through the noise, but Todd successfully hides his noise. Enraged, Prentice shoots Ben, prompting Todd to rush to his father's side. Before passing away, Ben apologizes to Todd and slips him a knife. Todd attacks Prentice with the knife, but Prentice retaliates, causing Todd to lose the knife. Todd runs to find cover, but Prentice wounds him with a gun. At the same time, Viola manages to send in so signal to the mothership. Later, Todd sneaks up from behind Prentice, but he soon realizes Prentice is just an illusion. Prentice tries to shoot him, but Todd manages to distract him with illusions of his mother and other women of Prentice Town, calling him a coward. They corner Prentice on the edge of a cliff, and Viola attacks him with a pipe. Despite Prentice grabbing the pipe, he loses his balance, and Viola lets go, causing Prentice to fall to his death. Viola tends to Todd, who is now badly wounded, and the colony mothership arrives. On seeing this, Davy and the remaining Prentice Town men flee in fear. Todd later wakes up in the medical room of the mothership, fully healed, with Viola by his side. Viola reveals her plan to live in the new world with him, and the movie ends.